Coming up on today's show, Tesla's Model 3 suffers a bottleneck in its production, Nissan pushes its vision of vehicle to grid, and an autonomous electric drone that you could be taking in the near future. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, October 6, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and I've just ordered the winter tyres for both of the electric cars in my family. Have you ordered yours yet? Assuming that is that you live in a northern hemisphere place that has some decent amount of snow in the winter. As it's the first show of October, it's time for the usual roundup of US plug-in sales figures. And with the new Nissan Leaf not available in the US yet, that's coming soon, and the Tesla Model 3 not available to private customers yet, more on that later in the show, the Chevrolet Bolt EV managed an impressive 2,632 units during the month, the second month in its nine-month sales history where it's been available nationwide. Its larger sibling, the Chevrolet Volt, managed just under 1,500 sales, while the outgoing Nissan Leaf managed just 1,055 units sold. Interestingly though, aside from Tesla, which doesn't break down its monthly sales figures, the next best-selling car in September was the Toyota Prius Prime plug-in hybrid, selling 1,899 units and showing that the longer-range plug-in hybrid really has an advantage on its predecessor. All other plug-in sales, well, they ranged from just seven or 800 examples down to just over 100 each, showing that while most automakers now do produce plug-in cars, Chevrolet, Toyota, Nissan, and Tesla are most certainly in the lead. A French automaker PSA, which includes Peugeot, Citroën, DS, and most recently Opel, hasn't been seen a whole lot in the US since Citroën exited the market there in 1974 and Peugeot bowed out in 1991. But on Wednesday, the company took its first steps to re-entering the US by launching its free-to-move smartphone app and service in Seattle, Washington state. Designed as a way to help customers compare the location and costs of available transportation options in the city, Free to Move is a little like a price comparison site for public ride and vehicle sharing services. And it will ultimately include everything from bicycle sharing schemes through to ride shares and ad hoc car hiring. Eventually, of course, I'm guessing it will tie in with a PSA branded car sharing service, which the company has already experience of thanks to a partnership with fellow French electric car sharing firm Bellore in LA. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you may remember about a year ago now, I filmed a short tutorial on how to integrate your Nissan Leaf with Amazon Alexa. And I still use it today to precondition my Leaf, check on its state of charge, and get some rough range estimates. Well, this week, Nissan announced that it's been working on its own Amazon Alexa skill that will work with any of its Nissan Connect equipped cars including the LEAF. The service isn't live yet, but says Nissan will be going live later this month. To advertise it, it's even produced a short ad promoting the capabilities of remote locking, but only newer vehicles will get that specific capability. Oh, and while the ad doesn't specifically show this puppy being left in an unaccompanied car, I'd like to remind you that preconditioning or not, don't leave a dog in an unattended car for long periods of time. Just don't do it. As any plug-in car owner will tell you, carrying around a wallet of different RFID cards just so you can charge away from home gets a little, well, frustrating after not very long. Which is why you might be happy to note that US-based ChargePoint has just announced a new RFID feature with its smartphone app. Rather than press the key card you've got with your account to the charging station, you can now press your RFID-enabled smartphone to the charging station too, which will start the session just as it would as if you'd use the card. And since you probably take your phone everywhere with you, it'll be less hassle, right? Following in the tire tracks of the launch of the 2018 Nissan Leaf with its larger capacity 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, Nissan has officially confirmed the 2018 Nissan ENV200 electric minivan will come with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack for an NEDC approved 
283 kilometers, that's 176 miles per charge. And given that it's far larger and less aerodynamic than the Nissan Leaf, that's not a bad range. But I should of course caution that the NEDC range is overly optimistic to the max. So expect a real world range closer to around 130 miles, that's 209 kilometers. Sadly too, while this van is amazing and I'd probably own one if I still lived in the UK, there are no plans to bring it stateside or to any other markets where previous generation ENV200 is currently not sold. Unless, of course, it arrives as a grey import. Sorry. US buyers might be upset about the lack of ENV200, but there might be some hope if GM, which produces the gasoline NV200 under license as the Chevy City Express, decides to make its smallest commercial van an electric vehicle. And while I severely doubt that it will, it might just happen thanks to news from GM this week that it intends to switch all of its vehicles to either battery electric or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in the not too distant future. Over the next 18 months, GM says it will bring two brand new all electric vehicles to market and by 2023 will introduce at least 20 new all-electric vehicles to market. It seems from GM's announcement that it views battery electric vehicles as the choice for the future of passenger cars, with hydrogen fuel cells being preferred for larger commercial and fleet vehicles and also for use in harsher environments. As to GM's prime market for large SUVs and pickup trucks, well, I think we're going to see a blend of hydrogen and battery electric offerings. The only thing left to do? Wait to see if GM is serious or not. With the third quarter of 2017 now officially behind us, Tesla announced its estimated production and delivery figures for the quarter this week. They show an overall growth in production and delivery for both Model S and Model X when compared to Q2 this year and Q3 last year, with a total of 26,150 vehicles delivered during the quarter. But while Model S and Model X did pretty well, Tesla only made 260 Model 3 cars during the quarter and delivered just 220. The reason? Bottlenecks at the Tesla Gigafactory and Tesla facility in Fremont, says the company, both of which have taken longer than it had hoped to get online. Tesla now says it's got everything running smoothly, but it's bad news for anyone who'd hoped that they'd be getting their Model 3 by the end of this year. As well as announce its longer range ENV200 electric minivan and hint at a Nismo variant of the 2018 Nissan Leaf, Nissan officially launched its X Storage V2G hardware for Europe this week, taking an opportunity to lay out some of its goals for the technology looking forwards. In addition to building a microgrid system that will help local communities in areas around the world with no electricity grid, Nissan says it will be working with local municipalities in Europe to bring Nissan's electric ecosystem, that's V to G and an EV for those who don't know, to those who it feels needs it, as well as partner with organizations in disaster prone areas to build robust V to G solutions to ensure that power can continue to flow even if the grid's been destroyed. As someone who lives in an earthquake area, this last one is very interesting to me, so I'm hoping to see some of this tech coming stateside very soon. Hot on the heels of General Motors' plan to electrify its fleet, Ford announced this week that it will be building a brand new team called Team Edison. Yeah, I know. Within the automaker, whose job it is to help make a rapid transition to electric vehicles. As part of this, Ford says it will be shifting a third of the funding it currently spends on ICE vehicles to electric vehicle development. And at the same time, it says it will be working heavily on developing new revenue models for autonomous and electric vehicles, with the end goal of becoming a mobility company rather than just an automaker. Again, the proof is in the pudding, but just as of last week's show, I think this news shows just how seriously mainstream automakers are getting about this new, exciting world of electric transportation. Unarguably Tesla's strongest asset, its global network of supercharger stations celebrated a milestone this week with the official launch of the 1,000th Tesla supercharger location in the world. Located in Pennsylvania, this 1,000th supercharger site now means that there are just under 7,000 supercharger stalls and 1,000 locations that you can charge your Tesla Model S, Model X or Model 3 at around the world. But just like its goal of producing 5,000 cars per week by the end of the year, Tesla is looking like it's got its work cut out if it wants to reach its own goal of having 10,000 supercharger stalls installed and active by the end of the year. I really hope Tesla reaches that goal, but it's going to be quite a lot of work considering we're only three months away from the end of the year, right? 
I regularly cover all sorts of interesting vehicles on this show, and today we're going to be touching base with one of the weirdest, a self-balancing electric motorcycle concept that Honda says it will unveil at the Tokyo Motor Show later this month. Called the Honda Riding Assist E Concept Motorcycle, this all-electric ride is effectively an evolution of the Honda Uni Cub, and can not only keep itself upright but also follow behind the rider in autonomous mode, just as this gasoline version of the same idea from CES earlier this year does. As a biker, I'm not sure how I feel about the idea of self-balancing bikes, but I'm still very curious to see it in the flesh. Although Tesla CEO Elon Musk gets most coverage on this show in relation to the company's work on electric vehicles, and more recently, his association with the Boring Company and its work on tunnels. But Musk hit the headlines at the end of last week when he suggested during a SpaceX event that, in addition to using his reusable Falcon rockets to get people to Mars, SpaceX could quite easily launch a passenger service that could make any city no more than rocket ride away. Literally going up into the air and then coming back down above the chosen city, the rockets could make air travel as we know it today obsolete. But in order to get those rockets up in the air is going to take a whole lot of fuel. And while I haven't done the maths as to how much fuel it's going to take, I'm guessing it's not all that environmentally friendly. At least, less so than the Hyperloop. Watch this space. Now that plug-in cars are becoming the norm in the world, we're slowly starting to see larger, traditionally gas-guzzling vehicles join the plug-in party. For example, I've got the Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan on loan this week, and of course I'm sure you're familiar with the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which, by the way, I should note I incorrectly said on last week's show would not have Chidemo for the US. It will and the Volvo XC90 T8 plug-in SUV. Well, this week, Land Rover joined in the party, launching the Range Rover Sport PHEV. Combining an 85 kilowatt electric motor with a 13.1 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, Land Rover says the Range Rover Sport PHEV will do about 30 miles in all electric range and notes that the electric motor makes off-roading easier than ever before thanks to its torque characteristics. Given I liked the all-electric Defender prototype that Land Rover made a few years ago, I'm really eager to see if any of its DNA is visible in this high-end plug-in Chelsea tractor. Have you ever sat in traffic in a busy city and wondered where your flying car is? After all, it's now 2017, and according to plenty of science fiction, we should all have flying cars by now, right? Well, this week, Passenger Drone, a three-year-old startup company focusing on autonomous electric flight, revealed video of its first autonomous passenger drone flight. Powered by a slew of electric motors all whizzing furiously above your head, the experience looks frankly amazing. But as Autoblog Green notes, the field of passenger drones is already pretty crowded, so it's going to be interesting to see which of the dozen or more companies investing in the tech actually make it to market first. And finally, if you're a Gen Xer like me, and you were a pretty nerdy kid, you might sometimes look at Elon Musk and wonder why you couldn't have come up with the same kind of tech awesomeness he seems to do on a regular basis at whim. Well, it seems we're not alone, and now there's a song about just how inadequate Elon Musk can make you feel. Called Elon Musk is Making Me Sad, it's a catchy, tongue-in-cheek story of one nerd, in this case Matt Sharp, bassist for Weezer, who had a similar start in life to Musk but somehow didn't end up making the same impact on the world, at least in the same way. It's a cute little ditty, and the link to the SoundCloud file is in the description below go listen to it. And on that melancholy tone, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss another episode. And if you like what I'm doing, why not contribute to the show's costs via Patreon? There's a clickable link at the end of this video and there's one in the description below. As usual, I'll be back next week with more Transport Evolved goodness, but I should note that the output will be a little lower as I've got to go into hospital on Monday for some minor surgery. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving. <laughs>